Hey there everyone, Phil Cho here and welcome to my channel. Fishing in Stardew Valley in the beginning can be quite frustrating. And as we have over 50 fish in the game, each and every one of those has its own specific requirements in order to be caught. In this video, we'll cover all of the basic fishing mechanics in Stardew Valley in order to learn the best way to catch all of the fish in the game. But before we start with the video, if you're new to my channel, consider subscribing since it helps me out a lot and it's totally free. With it, you will be notified of all of my future videos and you can browse all of my past ones as well. When we start the game, we have all of our skills at level 0, including fishing, but we don't get any access to the fishing rod until day 2, when Willy sends us a letter to meet him at the pier. When we go there, he gives us his old bamboo rod, which we can use to catch fish from then on. Other than the bamboo rod, we have the training rod, which you can buy from Willy shop at day 2, the fiberglass rod, which you need to have level 2 fishing to unlock, and it has the ability to use bait on it. And the iridium rod, which requires fishing level 6 to unlock, and it has the option for a tackle to be added to the rod as well. You start off with the bamboo rod. But if you're having difficulties fishing with it, at the start, you can just buy the training rod for 25 gold from Willy's shop, which can increase your fishing bar size artificially to level 5. But by doing so, you can only catch the basic fish and nothing else. This is a good move in order to level up your fishing to level 5 faster, where afterwards you can use the fiberglass rod by using bait to level up even further. The fishing skill level is important since it determines the maximum possible casting distance that you can cast your tackle. At level 0 you can cast at a maximum distance of 3 tiles to the south or north and 4 tiles to the east or west and the distance increases by 1 tile in all directions at levels 1, 4, 8 and 15. It's possible of reaching a skill level of 15 with a combination of food, key seasoning and an enchanted fishing rod but that's mostly required if you want to get the Iridium Crobus statue. The length of the cast is less important than where the bobber lands, and longer casts can improve fishing results if the bobber lands further from the shore, decreasing the chance of getting trash. The energy cost, however, when fishing, depends on your skill level of the profession. At fishing skill level 0, casting a line consumes 8 energy and each subsequent fishing level decreases the amount of energy used by 0.1. Sometimes you'll notice a pool of bubbles appearing in the water. These are special spots which grant you two benefits when you manage to cast into them. To make sure you're correctly casted in the bubbles, you should see some blue sparkles appear whenever you cast your line. If there are none, you should just recast your line and hope for the best. When you manage to correctly cast, the fish will bite 4 times faster and when determining the type of fish that is hooked, the effective fishing zone is increased by 1 and trash is less likely to appear. When you manage to hook a fish, the minigame starts and it contains a movable green rectangle that indicates the area of, of effect for the fishing line. You need to make sure the fish to be always within the green rectangle until you fill up the progress bar to the right. The green rectangle increases in size with a higher fishing level. At fishing level 0, the bar size has a length of 96 pixels and it's increased by 8 pixels for every increase in the fishing level. And at level 10 fishing, the bar size has a length of 176 pixels. The bar size can be further increased by either using the cork bobber or by increasing the fishing level past 10 by enchanting the fishing rod at the Volcano Forge by using a prismatic shard. The last way to increase your fishing bar is by using food buffs which grant a boost to your fishing level. The maximum possible bar size is 248 pixels, which can be achieved by combining all of the above boosts for your fishing level. When the fish never leaves the green rectangle, it counts as a perfect catch, which grants you two benefits. The quality of the fish is increased by 1, where a silver quality fish becomes a golden quality one and a golden quality fish turns into an iridium quality one. And the amount of experience you get from that catch is multiplied by 2.4, granting you an extra experience towards raising your fishing level. So it's always recommended for you to try and get a perfect catch to increase your profession faster. 
Speaking about quality, as you already know, the higher quality crop or fish, the higher the worth of that same product. For fishing, the factors that influence the quality of the fish that you receive are Casting further from land can produce a better quality fish The higher your fishing skill is, the higher the chance to produce a better quality fish And, as we mentioned before, perfect catches increase the quality by one grade as long as the fish was at least silver quality to begin with And the last way is by using the quality bobber, which can increase the quality of the fish by one grade in Saru Valley, every water tile is assigned a fishing zone number. Those numbers range from 0, 1, 2, 3 or 5. And these numbers control many aspects of fishing. The further the tile from the shore is, it's considered a better zone for fishing. The higher the fishing zone, the more benefits you can receive, like the chances of catching trash decreases, the size and quality of the fish gets better, the chances of hooking a difficult to catch fish increases, and some treasure chest items have zone requirements where certain valuable treasures can only be cut at zone 5. And the last one is that some legendary fish have zone requirements as well where you need to fish in a certain zone in order to catch it. It should also be noted that the color of the water is not a reliable indicator for the fishing zone. For a given location because darker shades of blue indicate deeper water, but in some cases there are places with dark blue color which have a fishing zone of 0, while some light blue can have a fishing zone of 5. When fishing for a certain fish that you need, it should be noted that finding that certain fish can be determined by a few factors like the season, where certain fish can be caught only in certain seasons, the weather, where some fish can only be caught when it's sunny or raining, the time of the day, where some fish can only be caught in the morning or evening, and the last is the body of water, where some fish are only found in certain bodies of water. The forest lake, forest river, town river can all contain their own types of fish, but there are a few other places you can get certain fish as well. In the desert, in the pond, you can catch the sandfish and the scorpion carp. In the mines on level 20, you can catch the stonefish and the ghostfish. While in the mines level 60, you can catch the ghostfish as well with the ice pip. On level 100 of the mines and the top of the volcano dungeon, you can catch the lava eel, which is one of the best fish you can keep in a fish pond in the game. The wood skip can only be found in the pond in the secret woods, the slime jack can only be found in the mutant bug lair, while the void salmon can only be found in the witch's swamp. We also have the legendary fish, which can only be cut once per save file, and they are all found in certain places and seasons as well. When you manage to hook a legendary fish in the fishing minigame, the fish will have a little red hat and it will be a different hue of blue than the ordinary fish symbol. The crimson fish can be caught in the summer of the east pier of the beach, the mutant carp can be caught year round in the sewers, the angler fish can be caught in fall near the plank bridge in the town river, the glacier fish can be caught in the cinder sap forest in the winter, and the legend can be caught in the mountain lake in spring. Also, it should be noted that if you're fishing in certain locations, you will be able to catch some secret fishing presents that concern they put in the game, where some of you may get wild fishing for some of the fish that you need in the game, but others are hidden away in some places you would never think of fishing. I made a video covering on all of the secret fishing presents that you can get, and I will leave a link for it down below, or you can just click here to watch that one as well. There's also a feature that a few players may not have heard of, which is the angled casts. It's possible to slightly alter the line's placement mid-cast with the movement keys, allowing better control over the aiming of the cast. This can be useful in two scenarios, when you're trying to fish in some non-standard fishing spot, like for example the desert pond where one of the secret gifts resides, or when bubbles spawn in some awkward locations, so you need to angle your cast in order to reach them. The fishing level can also be affected by some certain cooked dishes where the fishing level of the player will be increased temporarily. These are chowder, maple bar, shrimp cocktail, trout soup, which can increase your fishing level by 1, escargot and fish taco can increase your fishing level by 2, dish of the sea, fish stew, lobster bisque can increase your fishing level by 3, and the sea foam pudding can increase your fishing level by 4. By using key spices in cooking, 
a certain dish, it will make the dish golden quality, increasing the buff you get by one. During the fishing minigame, there's a chance that the treasure chest will appear inside the bar. And just like the fish, you need to grab it and fill a bar without losing the fish. If you lose the fish while grabbing the chest, you will lose all progress and fail the cast. Treasure chests are quite important, as you can get artifacts, minerals, ores or even weapons from them, and some treasure chests can only be caught in certain zones. Taking note of these can help you a lot if you manage to find some rare items like prismatic shards, diamonds or even Neptune's glaive which can be a huge boost in the start of the game. From fishing tackles, you should mostly take note of the treasure hunter tackle, where it increases the chance of fighting treasure chests and also the fish don't escape when you are collecting the treasure. The other bobber we have is a trap bobber, which causes fish to escape slower. And that is all you should know about fishing in Stardew Valley. Which is the best tackle or bait that you use on your playthrough and which was the hardest to catch fish for you? Let me know in the comment section below because I would love to hear your stories. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a like and if you'd like to see more content like this, feel free to subscribe to my channel. As always, I hope you have a great day and I will see you all in my next one. But till then, stay safe.